Now this slide shows you the, the idea how to apply the thermodynamic calculation for the uh, Galba annealing process. So as I mentioned, Galba annealing process is basically after galvanizing process, you have zinc coat on the surface of the your steel, and then you reheat this one to around 900 degrees Celsius, and then uh, this uh, liquid zinc can uh, chemically react with the uh, substrate and which can change the some of the chemistry on the surface of the substrate and also the melt chemistry of the liquid zinc and then this uh, liquid can further react with the uh, air and make uh, some kind of oxide uh, or oxidation uh, can happen at the surface so we are going to do the two, two calculation two stage calculation uh, in this case and the first one is the this solid uh, liquid uh, chemical reaction calculation. After that, we will find what kind of the liquid, uh, how does the liquid phase can be changed, and then we'll take that liquid uh, uh, react with the air uh, to understand the oxidation behavior too. Okay, so especially for this kind of oxidation reaction, uh, we can consider this kind of the concept. So let's assume we have some uh, oxidation. Uh, reaction from the air to the to the metal inside then uh, there's different layer of the oxide can be formed and uh, the the outer oxide which is forming uh, near to the air will be accumulated with the uh, uh, air uh, PO2 in air and then uh, the partial pressure of oxygen can be decreased uh, with the uh, uh, with actually the depth of the this kind of oxide so in order to uh, see the what kind of oxide can be formed uh, during the oxidation of the your metal, we can simply control the partial pressure of oxygen uh, from air condition to the almost metallic saturation condition, and then we see uh, all the oxide uh, layer forming, and then we can plot that with the partial pressure of oxygen, and that actually gives you the uh, reasonable idea of the what kind of oxide can be formed with the depth of the actually uh, with actually uh, with the uh, with the uh, from the surface to the inside of the your uh, steel or your metal, so we're going to apply this kind of the calculation in the oxidation reaction calculation later. Okay, so let's first look at the the reaction between the liquid zinc and the substrate. So FS steel database uh, have the reasonable database. Uh, to realize the both actually this kind of chemical reaction so we are considering the steel database and then uh, in, in this case only taking the steel database to calculate the chemical reaction between the uh, liquid zinc and then steel substrate so i assume that there's the 100 gram of the ZN plus uh, uh, this substrate material so iron with the 0.5 chrome and then 1% manganese so everything in gram so we enter all this one uh, and select only steel database and go to the next one and then uh, we set the annealing temperature at 900 degrees celsius and then select all the possible phase uh, and the solid and also solution at 180 condition of course and then we do calculate then uh, when you do the calculation you can get the, this kind of result so this is the pcc uh, steel which containing now about 62% of iron, 36% of the ZN inside of the steel, and then there's certain amount of chromium and manganese. And the third one is the liquid, uh, liquid metal, uh, which is uh, mainly uh, ZN, so 89% uh, of the zinc, and then you have about 10% of iron and some other impurity. Okay, uh, this actual result could be different depending on how much uh jet 10 and how much steel substrate you're actually allocating in the input okay but in this case we simply assume that there's the one to one uh, amount of the chemical reaction between the coat and the substrate okay then you can have these two and so this uh so this actually the part will be the the reacted after the action uh this will be the new liquid on the surface and this one this one is the reacted uh, steel surface side, and then you have original steel as it is. So we can assume this kind of layer could be formed before oxidation process happens.
okay and then uh, we'll save this one as a stream file for the next calculation so we save that and we enter it now uh, into the next calculation so i flip 100 of the, the that actually the liquid uh, liquid alloys which produced from the previous steel as a stream and then I'm adding zero amount of the oxygen zero amount of oxygen uh, so even though it's zero amount uh, because there's the oxygen is there so FEC says you know that there's the oxide that can be formed okay so it can prepare that so in the calculation we are using both steel database and FT oxide and PECT PS database and PECT PS we need the gas all the oxide as much as possible can be taken from the FT oxide database okay and then uh, you can go to now uh, select the, all the steel database and the, all the FT oxide database uh, in the solution here and then we select the, all the solid phase and then we go to the gas phase instead of selecting the old gas phase we just open the, this gas phase click uh, gas mouse light click on top of the gas and we go only select O2 gas okay and then when you click and then to the mouse right click again then you can uh, you can add now activity so when you do the mouse right click there's the uh, click say that you want to actually control the partial pressure of oxygen yes I want to control the partial pressure of oxygen okay and there's the way to have the linear scale or log scale I select the log scale in this case and then uh, I start actually doing calculation from minus 30 to 0, every 0 0.5. So I'm intentionally changing the partial pressure uh, in the calculation from minus 30 ATM to 0 ATM at 0 0.5 uh, in low scale, actually the step, step with the 0 0.5. Okay, I set this one, say OK, and then go next. And then I run the calculation, then you can have all this kind of calculation result happening okay and then i want to actually the, see that this result as uh, x-axis as a uh, uh, low partial pressure of oxygen and y-axis as a gram of the all the phases which is forming uh, in the calculation so that's what i want to do so you go output and then click the the plot and then we set the, actually the the plot in this way we set the axis in this way y-axis as a gram and x-axis as a log activity Y x axis as a log activity from minus 30 to 0, every 5, for example. And then uh, when you set this kind of log activity for the x axis, then you have to here set the what kind of activity you want to use for the your uh, x axis. And then uh, you have to enter the number here from the actually this, uh, this number here. So in this case, I want to use the oxygen as uh, oxygen partial pressure as x axis then you have to use this number one of the this oxygen number index is one so we have to use the one uh, we have to enter the one here then we are using uh, low oxygen partial pressure as x axis and then of course you have to go select all the stable phase for the gram of the phase okay select all the uh, stable phase and then click next then you can get to this kind of plot okay so here we can see that x axis is the partial pressure of oxygen and y axis is gram of the older phase. Here at the very low partial pressure, you have liquid phase as it is. And when you increase the partial pressure, you can start to see, okay, there's the uh, chinkite phase and there's spinel phase, there's MEO phase and spinel phase and uh, fixed white phase and etc. There's many different phases can be formed. And then uh, as I told you, the so oxide can be formed from the surface to the inner side with decreasing of the partial pressure. So you can actually assume that uh, this boundary, so outside here, this will be the, the one which is forming on the on the surface. Okay, so in the low scale, uh, 10 to the minus, in, I mean, in the normal atmosphere, PO2 equal to 0 0.21, then you are assuming somewhere here. And so you can see that there's a lot of the spinel phases forming, spinel plus Chinkite is the main phase, and there's a little bit of a big spike, but you may not see this one at all. So, Chinkite and the spinel phase is the main one, and then you can start to have the, some other phase. And so, this one, BCC plus Chinkite, and then there's some spinel monoxide liquid phase because that's forming 
even below here, and that is actually you can assume in this way. And then you have the liquid metal is still there in the below. Okay, so this uh, kind of schematic diagram can be understood from the, this kind of the calculation. So whether you can see all this layer in reality or not, uh, that's really uh, case by case. But at least this kind of calculation gives you the kind of insight, what kind of page you have to look at carefully. And this may be the, some of the possible page which can be formed as oxidation of the liquid steel. Okay, so this will give you the good, uh, good guideline for you uh, for the further actually investigation of the uh, liquid steel oxidation. Okay, that's good. Uh, so if you have any further question, uh, you can actually also contact me, and otherwise you can just follow the this slide. That will be helpful for you.